OK, well, I'm going to do my little mini pavlovas now. Um, so you two... We'll, we'll, we'll leave you, you to it, shall we? So sticking with the theme of the good old Kiwi classic, uh, we're going to do a pavlova, but we're not just going to do Mum's big fat pavlova. We're going to do a, a little bit, something a little bit more intricate. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do some nice little mini pavlovas. We can call them meringues, we can call them little vacheran. They have a few different names uh, depending on which country you're in. Um, but today we're going to call them mini pavlovas. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to make a passion fruit curd um, because we're going to serve these with passion fruit curd. And we're going to serve them with some nice little sort of tropical fruit and uh, fresh cream and a little bit of lime zest. Yum. Absolutely delicious. OK, uh, this is a dish we actually serve at the restaurant. So, uh, Nadia, I'm probably going to need your help, actually, so you might need to come up here and uh, give me a hand. We've got passion fruit juice, we've got a couple of eggs, and then we've got a whole lot of egg yolks. Okay. We'll add our sugar in there as well. The idea is that you cook this out. It's so boring, you would not believe it. It's the sort of job that I just never do um, in my kitchen, and it, it, and it is actually sort of idiot-proof, which is why we've got That's Nadia over here to... <laughs> <laughs> um, what we do is it's about whisking it. Now, we just uh, put it on the stove over there and you literally have to stand there and, you know, whisk it for about sort of 10 to 25 minutes, depending on the temperature and that sort of thing. So we'll put it over a bain-marie. And Nadia, my lovely assistant, <laughs> she's going to um, stand here and sort of whisk away and we wait for the eggs to thicken. We're also going to put a little bit of lime zest with this mix, uh, which will give it a nice little tang as well. So we'll just put that straight in there like that. Microphone's usually a good, a, the best job for this. Now, while Nadia is doing that, falling asleep over there, I am going to get on with making our meringues, OK? So, egg whites and sugar. When I was a kid, I used to come home from school, I used to crack eggs, eggs egg whites in a bowl, make some meringue, and then eat it with a spoon <laughs> without even cooking it. I love meringue, I'm obsessed with it. Straight on a nice mixer, and away we go. And... I'm going to wait for it to come up and get to sort of a, um, what I'd call, almost to a stiff peak. It's more like a soft peak. And then I'm going to start adding my sugar then so I get a really nice, um, stiff mix. This is getting quite thick now. How thick do you want it? Wow. Let's take it off. Yep. I'll give you a cloth so you can hold the side of the bowl. Thank you. All right, curds started to thicken really, really nicely. It actually needs a leaf of gelatine as well. Add the gelatine while it's still nice and warm, OK? And that way, when you add the gelatine to it, that's going to dissolve in there nicely. What the gelatine's going to do is ensure that once I've added my butter and I've brought all this mix together, that it's actually going to set. Now, we're going to add butter to this, and the butter needs to sort of dissolve in there. If it's too cold, the butter's just going to sit in there which is no good. It's just start adding it a little bit by a bit and whisk it all in there. Sure. If it starts dissolving, it's, it's, it's working. If, it's, if it's, you're having trouble, yeah. you probably need to get a little bit warmer. OK, we'll make sure our um, egg uh, whites in here are moving. OK, now I've got it sort of to a nice, soft peak, and I'm going to gently start adding the sugar. It's just a matter of standing there and slowly adding it. Okay. This takes a little bit of time, and this is, this is to make sure that all the sugar um, has time to mix in and dissolve as you go along. You need to let the cooking run its course. The worst thing you can do is under-whip it, um, and the granules of the sugar won't dissolve properly, and it won't give it a chance for this to whip up and get really, really stiff. You, you know, you literally should be tipping the bowl upside down and shaking it, and it shouldn't come out. It should be quite, um, quite sticky. And also in there, we're going to add our little bit of lychee um, powder, OK? And now what we've done with this is we've powdered some of these really nice lychees here. Really nice sort of dried lychees. They're totally crispy. And I'm just going to add that. Uh, and add that towards the end. And that's going to give a really nice flavour. All right, so I think our meringue's ready. We're going to pipe our um, little meringues. Don't overload uh, your piping bag. The, the worst thing you can do is um, put too much of the mix in there. And you can see that I've got my hand here and the little C from my thumb and my finger is where I'm picking and wiping off that. Nice and clean, nice and neat. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself in a right state. Go around to the outsides of the tray and you can see I'm just going to go underneath each corner. Just a little bit on there to hold, hold the whole thing nice and neat in place. 
And then we're going to pipe our little meringues, our little mini pavlovas. So go around like that. And when you are going to come off the top of them, you basically work your way around, then you're twisting off, OK? That way, this little sort of peak that sticks up, you immediately twist it round and sort of just sit it nicely on the top, and they'll all come out looking pretty much exactly the same. So we have it, really nice tray, and the way we bake that is we're putting them in the oven at 80 degrees, and we're drying them out, basically. You're cooking them for about, you know, an hour and a half until they're dry, if you like them sticky, you know, if you like that sort of crispy on the outside, a little bit gluey on the centre. Um, cook them a little bit less. So let's put that in the oven. How's that curd? Good. I think it's quite smooth. Should we have a taste? Yep. Mmm, that's really good. That's not bad, is it? It's really smooth. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to put that in the fridge. And uh, we'll let that set. Now, next job, we're going to cut up some uh, really nice little bits of fruit. I'll get you to do the kiwi fruit. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll top and tail. And we'll go nicely around the outsides. We'll start working it into nice little slivers. And, and, and when you're cutting up fruit, cut it naturally. Um, depending on what you're doing and if you're going to do something that's quite you know, formed or constructed. Uh, something like this can be cut nice and naturally, OK? How are we doing? A little bit off. I would, um, when you're cutting like this, I would, what I'd do is you take your first one off mm -hmm. and then I'd cut this way, OK? The only thing I'm looking at is that line there, yep. OK? So you're just staring at that line and then you're just watching your knife go down like that. And you're not doing too big a slices, but you're just looking at that line. And if you stand here and just follow that line with your knife okay. around like this, you're going to work your way gently around the other side. Whereas if you're going back this way, mm. you, you can't see where you're going. You're sort of yep. cutting blind. Okay. okay? So cool. follow it around that way. Thanks, Josh. Okay, so I'll cut up um, the mango. Mangoes are tough because, as expensive as they are, they're quite difficult to get as much as you want out of them. You know, they're a bit of a nightmare. When you first cut, you want to really hope that it is as close as you can possibly get to the stone, which is in the centre there. So I'm going to take a nice piece out of the centre. Uh, these bits I'm going to save and then take the peeling off. They're a tough thing to work with also because when they're beautiful and fresh, they're extremely delicate. I'm going to slice really, really thin. And papaya as well. Take the seeds out of the centre. And you can tell pretty much straight away whether these are ripe or not because of the smell. I mean, they smell absolutely fantastic when they're good. So I'll take uh, a nice little half here and I'll work away and peel it now. And these I'm going to make a little bit chunkier. What you can do also is you can take this and um, halve it mm -hmm. and then sort of scrape the interior out and put it in this nice little bowl here and we'll work with it out of a bowl. Right, so once we've got all our fruit nicely cut up, we've got the uh, curd we made earlier. So I've got some really nice whipped cream. I'm not going to show you how to whip cream because you've all done that fine so far. I've got my meringues here, and you can see that they're really nicely baked. They've sort of flattened out a little bit. They're nice and crunchy. Nadia's going to eat one to make sure. Oh, so cute. Really crunchy. Are oh, mm. they good? And you can really taste the lychee in it as mm. well. I know, yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll just start by putting a few of these um, little bits of fruit around. Nothing too fussy. Then I'm going to start with my curd. A couple of nice little meringues. You can sort of stand a few up, you can lie a few down, so it looks nice and neat. Cream. And the passion fruit is almost like a sauce. I'm not going to go too much on the meringues, uh, but we want a nice little bit through there. And the last thing I'm going to do, we're just going to zest um, some fresh lime over the top of that as well. So guys, that is a Kiwi classic. I've made it a little bit new wave. I've changed it around and made it slightly more modern, a bit more pleasing to the eye. But essentially, it is what it is. Mini pavlovas, cream and fresh fruit.